Hello, welcome to Burnett's Forge. Thank you for joining me in video two of my three video series in building a traditional brick blacksmith forge. Before we get started, please remember to subscribe, hit the like button, and click the bell for notifications. When we last left off, we were getting ready to add the chimney and work on the work surface for the forge. It has rained for the last 48 hours, so the brick arch and the smoke box had additional time to cure. The first thing I did today was take out the wooden arch support, and then I cleaned the interior of the smoke box and pointed and tucked the areas where additional mortar was necessary. I had set two goals for today. I wanted to add the final keystone to the smoke box arch, and I wanted to attach the tool rack to the front side of the forge. This required laying a couple of additional runs of brick. I started the keystone by getting a piece of styrofoam and cutting out the angles and the size for the keystone brick. I then transferred those angles to the brick. Using a diamond blade, I cut the brick into the appropriate size and angles and then affixed it to the front of the forge in keystone fashion with mortar. It turned out very well possibly even better than expected. I then turned my attention back to the tool rack. I laid the additional runs of brick and then with the diamond tip blade, cut a groove in one of the brick and mortared the bolt in place. After that has had several days to dry and cure, we will attach the tool arm. After laying the additional run of brick on either side of the brick I had prepared for the bolt to hold the tool arm, I then turned my attention back to the smoke box in completing it in preparation for building the chimney. Now that the smoke box and the smoke shelf has had additional time to dry and cure, I'll prepare to pour some concrete into the back portion of the smoke shelf between the external brick and the arch of the smoke box. I will let this dry for several days before I begin to position the additional fire brick for the back of the smoke box and the transition to the chimney. Based on the drawing I'm using, which I got from the Anvil's Ring 1979, the smoke shelf needs to be exactly six inches above the opening for the smoke box. This will be accomplished by topping the slow rolling back to the firebox with angled brick, which I cut. Atop those angled brick, I then placed a level run of fire brick. While those are drying, I set the angle iron for the remaining portion of the chimney. As I noted earlier, the smoke shelf is 22 inches from the floor of the smoke box. The opening to the smoke chamber is at 16 inches, giving a difference of six inches between the opening and the top of the smoke shelf. After the angle iron and mortar had been in place for several minutes, I turned my attention back to laying additional brick 
for the surround of the firebox. In the next video, the third and final video in this series, we will turn our attention to completing the chimney and then turn our attention to the work surface and installing the fire pot and the tweer. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share.